Welcome. We're here with 9023 at the Pacific Northwest District Championships. They have a really awesome robot. They're performing really well at this event right now, ranked in the top eight and uh, a really sweet shooter on this thing and some really unique control algorithms that we're going to learn more about on this episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, so at the beginning of the season, uh, after discussing game strategy, we came up with what our robot, uh, what we want our robot to accomplish on the field. Uh, we wanted to be able to have very fast cycle times, being able to shoot in both uh, amp and speaker from a distance. And I'll pass it over to you. So in order to do this, we went through several iterations over the season, and we narrowed in on four main points that we wanted our shooter to be able to do. Um, so the first one is we wanted spin. So in the shooter, we want our note to exit while spinning. And what this does is due to angle, conservation of angular momentum, it'll prevent the wobble the note has and it'll make the flight path of the note really accurate and predictable to the, to the speaker. So how we do that is we have two different separately controlled shooter sh modules. So each wheel spins separately. Um, and what this does is it allows it to spin at different speeds that way we can induce spin on the note. And another thing you'll notice is that there's no axle between the two wheels. What this allows us to do is um, it doesn't, it makes sure there's no contact with the note and it allows it to actually spin individually. The reason why we don't want any contact with the note is to prevent the spin being, you know, affected by the axle touching the note and that'll like make the path less predictable. The next thing we want is the compression of the note sideways. So like this and what this does what this does is it lengthens the note that way the wheels have more contact with the actual sides of the note and what this does is it has since it has longer time of contact um, it'll increase the impulse that the note has which therefore increases the velocity so we'll be able to go at much faster speeds into the speaker now the third thing is having compression of the actual foam of the note and what this encourages is it has the wheels have more traction on the note. That way we can have more friction and it will have more power on the note, which makes it go faster. And then the last thing is having less friction on the sides of the note. I know we talked about having more friction here, but that's to make sure the note goes faster out. You want to make sure there's no friction, you know, rubbing against the note on the sides of the note so it doesn't affect the flight path and it makes sure we go at the max speed. And how we do this is inside the shooter box, we have several rollers and right here, which is completely unique, we haven't seen anyone else who has this, we have these side rollers that make sure that there's no friction on the edge of the speaker, on the edge of the shooter, and there it remains compressed throughout the shooter. Now with our shooter design, we had a lot of control algorithms that make it effective and actually have it like be useful. So Rohan is gonna talk about that. Yeah, so the main way we control our shooter and our under the bumper intake is we have two separate state machines running for each of them that both interact with each other. So uh, essentially with our design this year, we have to perform a handoff from our intake uh, yeah, through, yeah, through here into our shooter over here. Yeah, like that. Uh, which we can demo that in a little bit. But yeah, so essentially we have two separate state machines running and the way we know our note is in our system is we track the current of the motor that drives these wheels right here. And basically when that current spikes, that tells us that the note is in our system and we can perform a centering sequence that allows us to get the note in the exact same place every time. And basically using the current versus a distance or beam brake, beam brake sensor, uh, it really um, simplifies the design and reduces overall complexity as we don't need any additional wiring or additional um, points of failure. Uh, so that's something that's been really helpful this year. 
All right, so um, we're able to use this this limelight here to to to, to basically detect the notes, and then um, by seeing how far it is from the certain point on our screen where we where we where it touches our intake to in intake the note, we're able to use P control to basically drive to wherever we see the note. So this this uh, this automatic drive to note is super useful in both the driver controlled and also in the in the autonomous so with that um, in the with the autonomous period we have the capability to start from any of the three starting positions and um, we can do we, we have dynamic and flexible autos and the main highlight of this is that auto drive to note so if a team happens to push a note on the center line for example then we're able to detect that note and we're able to automatically drive to the note even if it's not in the place where we planned it to be and also if the note on the center line has already been intaken by by some other team then we do not have to waste time coming all the way back to actually shoot that note which we haven't intaken all right and then one last thing uh, um, is that we have an auto tracking drive software which basically allows us from any point on the field we can able to, we are able to shoot a note into the speaker automatically so there's three aspects of this is angling our our actual drive base towards the speaker angling our shooter for the proper angle and then uh, figuring out the proper speeds of these uh, of these shooter wheels so that we can shoot the note into the speaker and the way we do this is by detecting April tags with our uh, with our second limelight camera there so when we see the April tags we're able to use sensor fusion to actually fuse the pose we get from our swerve odometry uh, we're able to fuse that with the pose we get from the April tag detections to find one single cohesive global position and using that we can find the distance and the angle to the speaker with the April tags and then we can calculate our um, angle of the drive base angle of the shooter and speeds of the wheels all right well thank you 9023 this is an awesome robot and you have some awesome outfits too uh, thank you. thanks for uh, your time and good luck with the rest of the competition thank you thank you this video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.